Pipes, and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by Smoky Mountain Relic Room and American Digger Magazine, and we are back, yes. dudes! Yes, at the Texas Through Time Museum with my good buddy, Andre Lujan. Andre, yeah. ah. Thanks for having me. Woo! So we're here to talk to you guys about the work that, you know, Andre and his museum does here in Texas and talk to you guys about Texas dinosaurs because there's a lot of stuff going on with dinosaurs in Texas. Andre, what's, what is the deal with Texas and dinosaurs? Well, Texas and dinosaurs is really just kind of, uh, it's a novel thing right now. We've, we've known about dinosaurs in Texas for quite some time, but we're really starting to uncover some new dinosaurs, and this is a really exciting time. So we're going to talk about some of those varieties, some things that are really unique to our state, and some things that uh, people haven't even heard of before. Now, see, one of the things you were talking to me about earlier at lunch today, you were talking about the environment that was going on in Texas, and when we think of dinosaurs, you know, that's what Texas all has with the volcano. Can you talk some a little bit about that? Absolutely, yeah. Let me just uh, make sure that we're oh, yeah. getting secure there. there. Yeah. Uh, so, really, um, we talked a little bit about this Cretaceous Seaway and the continents on either side of Texas. So, far eastern side of Texas was uh, Appalachia, that was that eastern continent during yep. the Cretaceous. The western side was Laramidia. And so, in southern Laramidia, in far west Texas, we have an environment that is uh, kind of subtropical, tropical. We've got hardwood trees, we've got conifers, we've got uh, an ingressing and egressing sea. Uh, so we've got the shoreline, we've got this river delta floodplain. There's volcanoes erupting. No, there's uh, volcanoes you know, in Texas. Absolutely, You're yeah, kidding. yeah. There's a lot, that is of, nuts. a lot of volcanism out in that area of our state. Uh, but we have uh, in the in the formation that we're digging these dinosaurs two distinct ash layers that are going to help us nail down the exact date oh, of, of the formation. So we know that there was volcanic activity during that time. That's so wild. So basically, when we were kids, everything that we've heard about or thought about is what what it looks like that dinosaurs were living on volcanoes in the sea in the tropics and all that is happening here in Texas. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Uh, we've got a really neat photo uh, painting here on the wall, uh, just to your right. And uh, a good friend of ours, Greg Sweat, painted that. And I just kind of told him about it, and he was inspired to paint the scene. So there it is. You know, when we all imagine the pterosaurs and the uh, the dinosaurs living there on the tropical shore and the volcanoes erupting. And, yeah. I mean, that's it. That's iconic. That's the so image cool, that comes dude. to mind. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, to talk about some of the dinosaurs we have, we'll, we'll start with the things that everybody expects, you know, tyrannosaurs. Um, we did have tyrannosaurs in Texas. Up north in Montana, in Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, during this time in the Cretaceous period, uh, and a little bit later, we have Tyrannosaurus rex, which is, you know, the, the undisputed granddad. He's the, he's the heavyweight champion of the Cretaceous period. Um, and this is a cast of a T-Rex foot. But the bone I have right here is a representative fossil of one of the smaller tyrannosaurs that we had in Texas during that time. This is actually the middle metatarsal. Okay. So this would be the center toe of a large tyrannosaur. You no can see way. Uh, it's a little bit more gracile, but it is it is comparable in size. So yeah. this probably was an active hunter. Yeah. Uh, uh, more like Allosaurus, you know, based on, on size, length, and, and size. That's so cool. Now, is, is this a piece that you guys found? Yes, here? we found this on our ranch, yeah. See, that's what's incredible about this museum and what Andre and his volunteers and staff here are doing is they are actively going into the field and discovering this history and getting it put together. I mean, they're doing they're doing the whole nine yards, man. This is What you guys are doing is awesome, Thank man. You, it's a real T-Rex metatarsal. God, it's so cool. Dude. It is cool. So what's really cool is um, we know now that we have Tyrannosaurs, so they they belong to that Tyrannosaurus, they, they belong to this kind of family. Okay. Um, but then we have the genus Tyrannosaurus. So okay. we have found a tooth that is, um, it's really diagnostic. Um, it's got large, it's a large robust tooth. It's got big heavy serrations just like a Tyrannosaurus rex tooth. But we know that this far south, populations would have been isolated enough to make it a new species. So a new species of Tyrannosaur down here in yes. Texas. Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus yeah. down here in Texas. Down here in Texas. No way. Somewhere. And Somewhere. someday, someone will find it. Hopefully that'll be us. Well, that's the science that you guys are doing is, is you guys are actively going out and you're discovering new species. It's just like on another one of our episodes we just filmed, we just talked about a brand new Ankylosaur that yeah. you guys discovered. It's a brand new species to science. And so, 
to find a new species of Tyrannosaurus that, God, dude, you know how cool that would be? Uh, yeah, it, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's very exciting. Just even the prospect, you know, the possibility to do something like that. Yeah. So we're going to keep it moving. We had yeah. Tyrannosaurus. That's what everybody wants to know about. But what did they eat? Uh, this bone right here represents a humerus of a hadrosaur, a duck-billed dinosaur called Critosaurus. And what's unique about these dinosaurs, <laughs> it's, it's not Critosaurus, not it's Critosaurus. Crito, okay. Yeah. All right. uh, but what's unique about these dinosaurs is they're found all the way to the tip of Argentina. Whoa. Uh, but we don't find them further north than southern Utah. Really? So these are southern dinosaurs. Okay. These are not northern dinosaurs. Um, and that just that makes it kind of special because it tells us that the environment was totally different. We've got this totally different fauna, and actually some of these species are migrating from South America to North America. Oh, that's cool! Just like species do today. Absolutely, just yeah. like species do today. So this is a representative fossil of that. But and again, another one that you guys found. Another one that we found, yeah. And the bottom shelf of this case right here are all bones from these large duckbill species. There's going to be some critosaurs in there. There's going to be some bones from a, a crested hadrosaur called Lambiosaur. So that's one that's got the bony mohawk, or you know, we recognize dinosaurs like that as the Parasaurolophus with the big long lure. Yeah, we didn't exactly have those, but they do find some of those in Mexico. So the possibility for us to find one in Texas is there. That's so cool, yeah. man. God, that's awesome. So now we've got Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus we've got, got the prey. We got the prey. Um, this is a neat bone right here. This is another metacarpal. So this is a finger bone. So that's one of your finger bones there. Right, of an ornithomimid, a bird mimic. So oh, cool. this is a, a really neat fossil. It's got some pathology, so there was an injury, some kind of growth, maybe infection there. Okay, so right there where that bone is swelled, it would normally standard be like that, but there was a break or an infection or something that caused that's this bone to, to, to swell up. So that's cool, man. This would man. have been a large theropod dinosaur, okay. uh, but it would not have had teeth it would have been more of like a beaked dinosaur. really no now i didn't know there were dinosaurs that had beaks and no teeth absolutely so think of really? the anzu wiley eye the chicken from hell yeah 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 the giant you know yeah it was like an <laughs> ostrich with these crazy hand claws you know and a, a really short tail i mean that it really it nuts. really looks like a chicken that's know? crazy man yeah. so so now we've got tyrannosaurus we've got hadrosaurus we've got giant giant chickens. Mimus, yeah. yeah giant chickens um, I've got another fossil here. This is from a smaller ceratopsian, a horned dinosaur with a bony frill, and this is from an aguja ceratops. So <laughs> you the guys have got the greatest names. I know, right? <laughs> aguja, so, I love it. Uh, the aguja is actually the formation that we're digging. So this this dinosaur is named for the formation. But this is a beautiful centrum. It shows the process here on the top. That's so cool. That's awesome, man. And then again, this is another bone that you guys yes, have discovered. Yes, absolutely. Everything I've showed you so far is stuff that stuff we've collected. That you guys have collected. Yeah, so we've got the horned dinosaurs, we've got the hadrosaurs, I mean, the tyrannosaurs. This is everything. This, I mean, is, this is everything. Is, this is almost everything. Well, you know? we do have things that aren't found anywhere else. So, uniquely Texan. Our and guy. in the spirit of Texas, bigger than everybody else. Of course. Oh, come on, Chase. Course, you know I had to go there. I know, dude. It's okay. all good. I want you to hold this right here. Whoa. Okay. And then I'm going to grab a prop. And we're going to talk about what that really means. What? This is the cast of a lower jaw of a saltwater crocodile. This crocodile would have been about 22 feet long. Yeah. What you're holding, Chase, is the hinge no! Of the jaw of a crocodile called look at that. Dinosuchus rio grandensis. So this is this is just that section yeah, right here, right it's there. This big. That's what you're God, looking. that's freaking huge. So dude. this crocodile, based on the on, on the uh, formula what? of the width of that, would have been about 39 to 40 feet long. What? Yeah. That is insane. So a crocodile that can bite this one in half. That's nuts, yeah. dude. That is. So cool. Yeah, so I, I told you, man, we're, we're getting into that Texas size stuff That's now. That's nuts. Well, what is it that makes these species so giant down here and not in other places? Or is that not even You know, thing? think about the tropics and the environment and the food, the density of prey animals. It's, it's a lot higher. Okay. Um, so these animals had a lot more to eat. You know, it was a lot wetter, and that's just more conducive to life. Okay. But reptiles like crocodiles, they have no maximum size. Right. So given enough time, 
and give it enough food, they could continue to grow going. bigger and bigger. That's and bigger. Awesome. So this may not even be as big as they could get. Yeah. You know, they could truly become uh, monsters. That's so cool. Yeah. So, so what's the future of paleontology in Texas look like? And what's the future of what the work that you guys are going to be doing and are doing? What's that going to look like? Wow, the future of paleontology in Texas is better understanding this uh, late Cretaceous time period in southern Laramidia, this, this continent of the western United States, and uh, figuring out what dinosaurs are new, how they relate to the northern dinosaurs, and maybe how dinosaurs were mixing and becoming hybrid. God, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. That's real science. Yeah, man. that is real science. And you guys are dead in the middle of it. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, cool. so we have only been working uh, for a few seasons out yeah. in these quarries, and as you can see, we produced a lot of fossils. So the, you did all this in just a handful of seasons. Yes. No way. Yes. Dude, you. Ah, that's yeah. so cool. I seriously can't wait till we come back ten years or two years from now and see what you guys are up to and what you're doing. Yeah, well, we'd be happy to have you, and really excited to share. Last but not least. Uh, you know, we forgot to talk about what was flying overhead. Oh, yes! So, we had in Texas uh, the largest species of flying reptile, a pterosaur. It was called Quetzalcoatlus. And this pterosaur had a wingspan up to 40 feet wide. So, and, and we, we're standing in a huge room here in our main uh, exhibit hall at the museum. Yeah. But that would be wingtip to wingtip, almost touching the walls. No way! That's nuts, dude! Yeah. That's insane! That is insane. That's crazy. So we're hoping to discover some more of these Texas giants, and um, we had one that is related to uh, dinosaurs in South America. We we've all heard of Argentinosaurus. We've all heard of Titanosaurus. Yeah, these so, big giant, these giant sauropods. Yeah. So we think of those as going away at the end of the Jurassic period because you had the Camarasaurus and the Apatosaurus. But in South America and also in Africa, Madagascar. These animals survived into the Cretaceous period, and they actually start to diversify and become even bigger than anything that lived in the Jurassic. So this group of animals is called Titanosaurs, and we actually have one of these two in the Cretaceous of Texas. It's called Allosaurus. Whoa! Yeah. That's nuts, man. So you've got the you've got like seven of the ten most iconic dinosaurs that can be found in West Texas during this time uh, of the Cretaceous period. And we're gonna keep digging, Chase, and I think we're gonna find some more. Man, dude, I'm I'm really excited to see what what you guys are gonna find, and I love the work that you guys are Thank doing you. here. And if you guys out there want to check this out or see what they're doing, there's all kinds of ways for you to check out and follow what they're doing. And if you want to volunteer and get involved, can Absolutely. you please share with people how people can get a hold of you, how they yeah, can follow you? Definitely. Well, you know, first and foremost, come and visit our museum. We're located at 110 North Waco Street in Most Hillsboro, people. Texas. That is the coolest logo I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a cowboy riding a T-Rex, roping a pterosaur. That's so cool, yeah, that's, it's got it all. That's, that's, I That's the spirit it, of Texas right there. But you can call the museum at 254-262-DINO. Uh, That's 3466. That's 254-262-3466. Or you can reach us at our website at uh, texasthroughtime.org. And reach out to us on social media. We Instagram and Facebook at Texas Through Time. So we're always looking for volunteers. We need people to help us clean these dinosaur bones. We need people that are going to go out on expeditions and help us collect these dinosaurs. So definitely reach out to us if you have an interest in paleontology. We have an interest in, in sharing our passion with you. That's awesome. And see, guys, you can get involved. You know, that's one of the things we're trying to do with this series. And what Andre is trying to do with you know this museum here is, is reach out through that camera and pull you guys in and get you guys involved in doing this. So if you want to do this, this is something that you guys can do. So this is this is awesome, man. We've got a lot of great, a lot of more great episodes with Andre uh, on our YouTube channel. Be sure to scan through and look for that. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Facebook at Chasing History. We've got a podcast called Chasing History Radio that are all things history related so this is dude i love your place i love Thank your you. passion Thank love you. what you guys are doing i love this stuff it's a t-rex bone it's so awesome <laughs> man dude thanks thank you, Thanks. Thank so you. Much, man. Yeah. appreciate it history rocks Woohoo!